Good day, and thank you for tuning in to the Kingdom Center radio show. I am Clint Wilkins, your host and senior pastor of the Kingdom Center. It is my prayer that this message will glorify God and be a blessing to you as well. Enjoy. Amen, amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. To God be the glory for the great things that he has done. Uh, we are so glad to have another opportunity to come together with you and to share in God's word. Good morning to my brother Ben. God bless you. I see you out there this morning. Praise be to God. Amen, amen. To others of you that are joining us, we, we thank you for your presence. Um, God bless you. To God be the glory. What a beautiful day it is. Uh, I haven't been outside as of yet. So uh, and I haven't checked the temperature, so I don't know what it feels like. Amen. But I know that uh, as I look out and I see God's glory, amen, it, it is a beautiful day outside. And uh, this is a day that the Lord has made and we will rejoice and be glad in that. So to God be the glory for uh, for his blessings and to God be the glory for allowing you uh, to share with us and for allowing us to share with you. Amen. We are so thankful. Amen. To have this opportunity. Uh, we're thankful for waking up this morning and. Uh, just having breath in our body and the activities of our limbs. Amen. So we're uh, we're thankful this morning. I want to call a few names out in prayer this morning uh, as we uh, before we really jump into the meat of uh, of worship this morning. Amen. We just want to call a few names. Um, just calling on uh, the name of uh, my, my longtime friend, my brother Thomas Madison up in Johnson City, Johnson City, Tennessee. Excuse me. Uh, we're just believing God this morning for him and Catherine and uh, his, his children and uh, grandson, amen. God, God bless you all. Uh, Thomas, we love you and we're continuing to lift you all up. Uh, Brother Lester Wilder, uh, we're continuing to lift him up in prayer, uh, believing God to continue to bless him. Uh, my cousin Gloria Williams, uh, we're continuing to lift her up as well as her mother and my aunt. Uh, my Mamie Williams, we continue to believe God for her. Uh, continuing to pray for the Williams fam family out in Wilmington, North Carolina. Uh, we've been um, praying with the Williams family for quite some time. Uh, uh, Mr. Williams passed away last week and was funeralized on last Monday. Amen. Praise God. And, and Sister Williams had been in the hospital and had surgery, and we understand that she's home, and we pray for her recovery as well as their, their daughter Erica, their sons, uh, Derek and Jamie. We continue to lift them up in prayer. Uh, the Davis family out in Macon, North Carolina, Reverend Bodie Davis, Evangelist Betty Davis, uh, great supporters and the spiritual uh, supporters and, and uh, physical supporters of the Kingdom Center, we thank you all so much uh, for continuing to support us, and we believe God uh, to, to continue to bless your household as well. Continue to pray for uh, Sister Barbara Caluso, Barbara Gersh Caluso, I believe, um, in New York. Amen. We continue to uh, believe God for her healing, uh, believing God that he'll continue to uh, to bless her body and to heal her body. Uh, continue to pray for the Gersh family, brother and for the Ronnie Gersh, Sister Carolyn Gersh, we continue to lift them up in prayer as well. Sister Barbara Caluso is uh, Brother Gersh's sister. Uh, we continue to uh, pray for Sister Priscilla Simmons. Uh, continue to believe God uh, to to uh, to work within her household and believe God to to heal her body. Uh, continue to pray for Brother David Lockhart up in Pennsylvania, uh, and uh, we're thankful for uh, for uh, God continuing to bless him, continuing to uh, to care for him. Sister Patricia Somerville. Uh, long time, uh, long time, uh, love, uh, love of, of ours. Amen. We love Sister Patricia Somerville and we continue to pray for her. 
Uh, we're praying for uh, the Pew family and the Jones Chapel family of Warren County, uh, Pastor Anthony Austin, uh, Sister Reverend uh, Sheila Austin. We continue to pray for them. Uh, Reverend John Pugh over at White's Grove, who is the brother of Brother uh, Walter Pugh, who passed away this past week. We continue to lift them up in prayer. And we just uh, congratulate and continue to pray for uh, the Snelling and Neal families. Quan Charity uh, had a new baby. She's a few days old, baby Aaliyah. And we continue to believe God uh, that he's going to bless them with health and prosperity. And we just thank and praise God uh, for bringing baby Aaliyah into the world safely. Uh, we can, and we also lift up Sister Doris Hockaday. Doris is, uh, my brother Ben's sister. She works in the healthcare field and we continue to pray for her and others who work in the healthcare field are on the front lines and, uh, and battling, uh, the, the, uh, the coronavirus and, uh, and right in front of them each and every day. We continue to believe God that he will, uh, protect and deal with their situations individually and collectively. Let us pray. Most holy and ever wise God, we thank you for just allowing us to have another opportunity to come together and to share. God, we bless you right now in the name of Jesus. God, every name and every situation that we called, we believe you right now, God, in the name of Jesus, that you can handle it all. God, we understand that you are a sovereign God and you are bigger than all our problems. So God, I ask that you just go into the minds and the hearts of every person under the sound of my voice right now, God, and that you just bring a peace and a comfort that surpasses all understanding. Help us all to understand that regardless of whatever sickness we may be going through, that all sickness is not unto death and that, uh, God, that you are a healer and that we must rely and have faith on you in all that we do. God, help us to understand that financial situations can be handled by you, God, that you are sovereign and you are a provider. And God, we thank you in advance for provision in our lives. God, help us to understand that, that those relational issues that we may be having either within ourselves or amongst each other or even those relational issues that we may be having with you. God, help us to understand right now in the name of Jesus, God, that you're a comforter and you're a peacemaker, God. Help us to uh, to come together and be in right relationship with you in all that we do, that we might honor you in our lives. God, we ask that you just bless us in a mighty way. But God, most of all, we ask that you give us the strength and the mindset to glorify you. God, bless today's word. God, allow it to be a word that will inspire us, uh, inspire us all to grow closer to you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. To God be the glory. Amen. Again, we are glad to have another opportunity to share this morning. Uh, this morning, we're sharing from the topic, have a little talk with Jesus. Amen. For many of us, uh, the song uh, comes to mind right away. I'm not going to sing this morning, praise God. But, uh, you know, we often hear, have a little talk with Jesus. Tell him all about our troubles. Amen. I'll, I'll allude to that later. But I want to I want to begin. Uh, good morning my, to my brother Thomas. Amen. Uh, I, I want to. I want to begin by sharing with you, and I'll share a couple of areas of scripture. So I ask you all to be patient with me this morning as I share from the word of God. From the New King James Version of the Bible, uh, the uh, James chapter 5, verses 13 through 16, uh, again from the New King James Version of the Bible, they read this way. Uh, it says, "If anyone among you suffer, is anyone among you suffering, let him pray. Is anyone cheerful, let him sing psalms. Is anyone among you sick? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith will save the sick and the Lord will raise him up. And if he has committed sins, he will be forgiven. Confess your trespasses to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. The effective, fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. That's James, the fifth chapter, verses 13. Through 16. And I ask for your continued patience this morning as I read also from Matthew, the sixth chapter. I'm going to read verses 5 through 15, also from the New King James Version of the Bible. And they read this way It says, And when you pray, you shall not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the corners of the streets, that they may be seen by men. Assuredly, I say to you, they have their reward. But you, when you pray, go into your room. And when you have shut your door, pray to your father who is in the secret place and your father who sees in secret will, will reward you openly. And when you pray, do not use vain repetitions as the heathen do, for they think they will be heard for their many words. Therefore, do not be like them, for your father knows the things that you have need of before you ask of him. In this manner, therefore, pray. 
Our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. For if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive men their trespasses, neither will your father forgive your trespasses. This is the word of the Lord. And I pray that wherever or however you're with us this morning, you will join me in saying amen and amen. And so uh, to the, today, I, I want to begin today by just kind of uh, reflecting a bit on if you were with us on Thursday night, uh, I, I shared from the topic persuaded. And I talked about how uh, there is a need for us to come together. And, and, and I talked about how there is a need for us uh, to learn to work together and to learn uh, a need for us to learn to love on each other. And, and, and as I reflected in personally on Thursday night's message, uh, you know, and, and as I began to pray over uh, because I'm always praying that what I'm sharing with you is honoring God. And, and I want to pray. Uh, I always pray and I, I want to consistently pray not only before I share with you, but after I share with you. Amen. That God is glorified in what uh, what he has laid on my heart and what I have shared and how I've shared it. I'm always asking him to get me out of the way and make sure that what comes to you is what he has wanted you to hear and not just what I want to say. And so as I was uh, pondering or as I was reflecting on Thursday night's message and how we talked about uh, coming together and wanting to or needing to share with each other, it dawned on me that, uh, or, or I won't even say it dawned on me, I'll say God laid on my heart uh, that, that one of the issues that we have in being able to come together is that we ourselves oftentimes struggle get, to get to a place of a right relationship with God. And I remind you that the Bible itself uh, says, and I believe it's uh uh, I believe it's in the book of James where he says, we, I'm paraphrasing here when he says that we cannot possibly love him whom we've never seen if we don't love our brother and sister that we see every day. And so it's important that we understand that we come to, uh, that we've got to come to a place of a right relationship with God that allows us to love each other and love each other uh, abundantly and unconditionally. Now, I do understand, and I know this is going to sound difficult. It is maybe difficult for some people to really comprehend, but I want to make sure that you get the fullness of what I'm saying uh, this morning. Uh, I, I want us to understand that there will be some people who have ways that you do not like. Amen. And there will be some things that people do uh, that we do not like. However, the Bible does not require us to like everything that everybody does or to like every every uh, facet of everybody's personality. But the Bible requires us to love everybody. And so if I have somebody that I've encountered or I have somebody that I've dealt with, if I have a family member uh, that I encounter on a consistent basis, or if I have uh, somebody that I work with or somebody that I go to school with or somebody that I deal with on a consistent basis, maybe it's even somebody in your church uh, that, that has ways that you don't like. It's, it's okay that you don't like their ways, but we still have to be at a place in our relationship with God where we love them enough that we don't hate on them, but that we want to see them come to a right relationship with God themselves. Now, I have to throw this in as a side note, because it is important that we also understand that as we're praying or as we're considering uh, the need for them to come into a right relationship with God, we also want to consider and understand that we have to also pray that our relationship with God is right also. Because we want to make sure that we are not so caught up in our in our self-righteousness or our self-preservation that we begin to think uh, that, that we are always right. We have to get to a place where we understand through and by the grace and mercy and knowledge of God. We have to get to a point where we understand that it may very well be us. I tell people all the time. Uh, that if, if you can't get along with anybody that's around you, if everybody around you has a problem, you might want to check yourself before you wreck yourself. Because it may not be everybody else, but it may very well be that you have a problem and everybody else is reacting. I'm not saying that's always the case, but I'm saying we have to make sure that we do as the Bible says and that we examine ourselves and that we make sure that our personas, our attitudes, that the things that we do are always in alignment with the word and with the will of God. Now, that does not mean, 
amen, that we're, that we're perfect because the Bible says all have sinned and come short of his glory. However, it does mean, as Paul said, that we've not already attained it, but we're pressing towards the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus, which means that we're always examining ourselves. We're always working. As I tell uh, the kids that I teach and the kids that I coach, I'm always telling, and even the people I pastor, I tell, I, I, I'm always saying, we're not, uh, we're not expecting to be perfect. But what we want to do is we want today to be better than we were yesterday. And we want to be better tomorrow than we were today. All that we require uh, and, and all that God requires of us is that uh, not perfection, but that we get better every day. He wants us to grow. Yes, Edna, that mirror first. We got to look at that man in the mirror and we got to be able to examine ourselves. And that's why I struggle with the society that we live in today. I struggle with the thought that there are people in our world who can hate on others simply because of uh, the color of their skin or because of the, uh, of the area of their origin or because of the nature of their political affiliations. I struggle with that. I'm not saying that we ought to agree and I, I'm not saying that we're going to agree on everything. And I'm not saying that we're going to have the same mindset uh, when it comes to everything, because we all understand that our mindsets and our understandings and our ideologies, uh, they come from our own experiences and our own backgrounds and, and the things that we dealt with in our life. So the fact that my experience is different from your experience, even my experience as a pastor will be different than somebody else's experience as a pastor. And so as we deal with the situations of life, our ideologies may not line up. Our thought processes may not always line up. But what we have to do is we have to make sure that we are uh, pressing towards a place where our relationship with God is right so that at the end of the day, it does not matter what I want and it does not matter what you want, but what matters is what God wants. And if we can all get on the same page and understand that God's will is what's best for all of us, then we can coexist in this world that we live in. And even though we've had different experiences and even though we've had different backgrounds and different and even though we have different socioeconomic statuses, even though those things are true in our personal lives, we are able to come together and we're able to walk together in our spiritual lives. And so it's important that we understand that, that the most important thing to all of us is a right relationship with God that will allow us to get past our differences and, and allow us to get past uh, our, our, our strongholds, get, allow us to get past our hard times and allow us to get past our difficulties so that we can all see God in the same light, not based on what it is that he's been skewed to look like, but based on who it is that he really is. And so we have to uh, we have to do that. And in order to do that, we have to work on making sure that we have a right relationship with God. And, and that, that first of all starts uh, with us being able to study, to read and study his word. But I share this with you this morning, and I'm asking you all to be patient and hear me out as I make this statement, because I don't want to offend, nor do I want to confuse anyone with what I'm about to say. But I want to make sure that we all understand that what I'm about to say uh, it, it, uh, you have to listen to the totality of the uh, uh, of the statement to make sure that you get a clear understanding and make sure that I am understood correctly. I want us to understand that it is so important that we read and study scripture and that we uh, and, and it's so important that we understand what the word of God says. But it is also under it is also extremely important that as we read and study scripture, that we have a prayer life that goes along with our reading and our study. And I share with you that reading and studying scripture alone will not do it. And that's why I said I want to make sure that you understand all of what I'm saying. Reading and studying scripture alone will not do it. Don't get me wrong. Reading and studying scripture is extremely important. But we also have to have, make sure you're understanding what I'm saying. You also have to have a prayer life to go along with that. Why? Well, because listen to what I said earlier. Each one of us have ideologies and we have mindsets that are based on our experiences. And so if we simply go in and we read and study scripture and we don't look at that scripture based on what it is that God is saying, as opposed to what it is that we've experienced or what it is, uh, uh, what it is that we've been taught over the years. And let's just be honest. A lot of us have simply been taught wrong. And, and because we've been taught wrong, we continue to do wrong. But we have to get to a place where we're not relying on 
the experiences of our past completely, but that we're relying on the word and the spirit of God to lead and to guide us. And so we have to make sure that we have a prayer life that goes along with uh, our reading and our studying and our examining of ourselves so that we can continue to grow and, and so that the um, so that the five year old church girl or the five year old church boy uh, that you were way back in the day when you were going to church is not the same uh, 40 or 50 year old church girl and church boy that you're dealing with today, but that we're growing in Christ and we're growing in our knowledge of the word. The Bible says my people perish for lack of knowledge. We are dying spiritually because we do not not only do we uh, not know the word of God, but we don't know the spirit of God. And so we've got to get to a place where we're pressing, pressing towards the mark for the prize of the high calling in Christ Jesus, making sure that not only do we know what the word says, but that we know what God is saying through his word and, and how he's speaking to us. And so the question I pose to you this morning or the question that I ask you to pose to yourself is how can I grow in God uh, through my study of scripture and how can I grow in God through my prayer life? Well, let's 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 attack that backwards. Uh, let's let's look at our prayer life first. The first thing that we have to do is we have to make sure that our prayer life is really prayer life. Amen. We have to really make sure that when we're praying, that we're actually praying and that we're not just as the scripture would say, uh, we're not just repeating vain repetition. And, you know, we sometimes, uh, as a cliche, we sometimes uh, say things like, you know, prayer is the key and faith unlocks the door. And we talk about the necessity of prayer. All that is true. But the question is, if prayer is the key and faith unlocks the door, then have you used your key? And do you believe that your key will work? Do you have the faith to believe that when you put the key in the door, that the key is going to unlock and um, then what it is that God has for us. Amen. Uh, the songwriter picked it up and he says, oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear. All because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. And I share that with you this morning because I want you to understand what that songwriter was saying. We, we go through so much stuff because we don't carry everything to God in prayer. And we've got to get to a place in our lives where we understand that our prayer life is simply this. Prayer is simply communication or conversation with God. And oftentimes what we do is instead of honestly praying, what we do is we've picked up on catchphrases and vain repetition. And, and we have a tendency to go at God with a monologue. We have a tendency to, uh, to, to talk to God. We have a tendency to, uh, to I, I, let, me, let me rephrase that. We have a tendency to talk at God instead of talking to God. And, and here's the difference. When we're talking at God, then we're just telling God, you know, uh, we're telling God what we want to say. And I know, you know, we, uh, our topic today, have a little talk with Jesus. Well, the reason I chose it as a topic is because, you know, the song says, have a little talk with Jesus. Tell him all about our troubles. But what we need to know is that when we're having that little talk with Jesus and we're telling him, about, uh, telling him all about our troubles, our purpose in telling God about our troubles is not for the purpose of his knowledge. We've got to understand who, we talk, who we're talking to. We're talking to God. He already knows. He already sees and he already cares. So when we go to God to tell him all about our troubles, or when we have that little talk with Jesus and we tell him all about our troubles, we're not giving him new information. He already knows what's going on in our lives. He already knows what's going on in our minds. He already knows what's going on in our hearts. So when we share with him, the purpose is not to, uh, not to inform him, and the purpose is not to give him new information, but the purpose of having that little talk with Jesus and actually telling him all about our troubles is that we are to acknowledge him. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 says, uh, trust in the Lord with all our heart and lean not into our own understanding, but in all our ways acknowledge him and he'll direct our path. And so we have to understand that our purpose of sharing with God is not to tell him, I mean, not to inform him, but we are acknowledging him in all that we do. And, and when we acknowledge him, we're letting him know this is what we're saying. We're saying to God, God, this is what I'm going through. And God, I acknowledge, I acknowledge you as sovereign in my life. God, I acknowledge you as the ruler of the universe. God, I acknowledge you as the person who, uh, who has a name above all names. I acknowledge you as the one who I need to come to 
because I understand that you are sovereign and you are bigger than all my problems. And so we have to get to a point where we're uh, where we're able to refocus our prayer lives. We have to make make sure that when we're praying, that we're refocusing and that our prayer lives are not just about us. Amen. That we're not just going in and we're not just saying, God, I want God, I need God, you know. God, I, God, you say it. God, we, 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 we go in and we start making these demands of God without taking the time to listen to what it is that he's saying. But we have to get to a place where we're not just talking at God, but we're talking to God. And if we get to the place where we're actually holding a conversation, I know this sounds crazy to some folk who really haven't gotten there yet, but I share this with you this morning. When you get to a right relationship with God, he will answer your prayer. He will give you, amen, the, the desires of your heart. He will do that. But here's the thing. The desires of your heart are, won't necessarily be what you desired when you came into prayer with him. But God will take your words and God will take your mind and he will take your heart and he will begin to change them so that they line up with what it is that he's thinking and what it is that he's wanting. And, but, and, and by the time you come out of that effective and fervent prayer, by the time you come out of it, then what should happen is that your ways should line up with his ways. Isaiah 55 and 8, he says uh, that his ways are not, uh, his, his name, ways are not our ways and his thoughts are not our thoughts. And so we understand that when we go to God in prayer and we acknowledge him, then what God will do is, yes, he will give us the desires of our heart. But what he does is he, he changes our desires so that they line up with what it is that his will is for our lives. And so we have to make sure that we refocus our prayer lives. Matthew 6, one that I quote often says, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things I'll add unto you. So here's the thing. We've got to get to a place as we refocus our prayer lives, as we continue to have that little talk with Jesus, we've got to get to that place where we understand that what we're seeking is not the righteousness of ourselves, not the righteousness of our past, not the righteousness of our friends, not the righteousness of our co-workers, not even the righteousness of our church members, but what we're seeking is the righteousness of God. And if we can get to a place, praise God, where we are, are, are working towards a right relationship with him, then his promise to us is that if we seek his righteousness, then all these things he'll add unto us. And so we have to keep doing that. But in order to do that, we must be willing to hold a conversation with God and understand what I'm saying. It's a conversation and not a monologue, which means that that C-O-N means with. And so it means that, that that conversation goes both ways. And so as we look at uh, this scripture, and I, I won't hold you long. I'm going to try not to hold you long, but I'm going to do what the Lord says. As we look at the scripture, as we look at James 5, 13 through 16, the scripture says this. It says, is anyone among you suffering? Let him pray. In other words, if you're suffering, talk to God about it. Anyone among you cheerful, let him sing songs. And that indicates to us simply this, that the only time that we go to God in prayer should not be simply when we're going through something. But we ought to go to God in prayer even when things are going well in our lives. And that allows us to have a right relationship with God so that the only time that we hear his voice is not when we're going through hell, but we, 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 we hear his voice also when things are going well. And maybe, just maybe, if we talk to him when we're on the high places in our lives, when we're on the mountaintops and not just when we're in, when we're in the valleys, maybe our time in the valley won't be so often. It says, verse 14, if anyone, is a, anyone among you is sick, let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. That indicates to us that sometimes, uh, sometimes when you, when you haven't gotten to a place where you're strong enough in your own prayer life, you got to go to some folks who truly know the word of the Lord and truly know the spirit of the Lord and truly are able to go to him in prayer on your behalf. And get them to not only pray for you, but get them to pray with you that we all might grow in, in the grace and mercy of God. Verse 15 says, and the prayer of faith will save the sick and the Lord will raise him up. And if he has committed sins, he will be forgiven. And I say to you today, for those of you who are going through something, 
for those of you who are dealing with something, for those of you who have done something, for those of you uh, who are not in a place where you are in your right relationship with God, I say to you uh, that people throughout uh, uh, people throughout the religious community have for years tried to discount people because of what they've done in their lives. But I say to you today, it does not matter what you have done. It does not matter how much hell you have raised or how much hell you have caused. If you will will com will confess to the Lord Jesus and accept him as your personal savior, he will forgive you and, and he will be there for you. But you've just got to get to a place where it is a right relationship with him. Verse 16 says, confess your trespasses to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. And I want to share this with you because I want to make sure that we understand something. That does not mean that we go down the street and we ring a bell and tell everybody how much hell we've caused and how much hell we've raised. That's not what that means, because we have to have a spirit of discernment within ourselves that comes with the right relationship with God and allow, allows us to understand who it is that we can share our issues and our problems with so that uh, so that we are not only uh, we're not only counseled, but we're also protected by the spirit of the almighty God. And then notice what the end of that scripture says. It says the effective, fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. And so for those of you have, who have been crying and praying and praying and crying and trying to work through some stuff and trying to understand why it is uh, that God's not working it out in your life, it's not that God's not working it out in your life. It's just that we have to get to a place. We all have to get to a place where we are in the right place or we, or we are in a place of righteousness in the eyesight of God. And it may very well be that instead of uh, instead of uh, 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 instead of punishing you, he is actually keeping you through your mess until you can get to a place of, a, of righteousness in his eyes. And so I share that with you this morning with the understanding that we have to refocus our prayer lives. Uh, we have to refocus what it is that we're doing uh, in our daily lives. We have to learn uh, how to get to a place of righteousness in his eyes and not just a place of righteousness in the eyes of ourselves or in the eyes of each other. We have to get to a place where we're honestly able to have a little talk with Jesus and acknowledge him as we tell him all about our trouble. And so you might ask the question this morning, well, how do I go to God in prayer? If I'm not, if not, if I'm not actually uh, just going to God and telling him what I'm going through and telling him what I'm dealing with, then how do I go to him? Well, he answers that in the sixth chapter of Matthew, uh, which we call the model prayer. I know for years in the church, people have called it the Lord's Prayer, but I prefer the term the model prayer. That's just my personal preference. I'm not dogging anybody or, or discounting anybody who calls it the Lord's Prayer, but I like to refer to it as the model prayer because it is the model that Jesus gave the disciples and how to pray. And so I share this with you uh, as a closing thought this morning. As you go to God in prayer, make sure that uh, that you first of all acknowledge him. Notice what he told the disciples. He says, therefore, do not be like them. He talked about those who uh, repeat vain repetition. So when you go to God in prayer, don't just go in and keep repeating vain repetition, uh, repeating the same stuff over and over again, because that's what you were taught to do when you were in Sunday school or when you were in Bible school back in the third and fourth grade. Amen. But don't continue to do that, but learn to have a conversation with God that allows you to truly have uh, have communication with him so that he can speak to you and you can speak to him. And, and But Jesus told them, he said, don't be like them, for your father knows the things that you have need of before you ask him. It goes back to what I told you earlier. We're not telling God our, about our issues because we're giving him information. He already knows. And so Jesus said to the disciples, he said, in this manner, therefore, pray. He said, our father in heaven, hallowed be thy name, your kingdom come, your will be done. And so I share with you this morning as we learn to refocus our